My name is Homa Mulji and this exhibition called Your Tongue in My Mouth is at Mirror at the Arts University Plymouth. There are seven works in the gallery. Each of the work takes a different form. So there's a wallpaper, which is an image of a restaging of an event, which is abraded. So I've removed it with sandpaper and then reproduced it as wallpaper. And this serves as a backdrop to the exhibition. There's a sculpture, which is allegedly the lost nose of the queen. It's a carved marble piece. There are two video works. There are postcards to take away, two of which are works in their own right and two others which uh, function also as subtitles to one of the films in the exhibition. All the elements in the exhibition, in one way or another, are connected to a memorial to Queen Victoria, which was inaugurated in Karachi in Pakistan in 1902 and um, removed in 1961. Translated into Urdu, Raat Kirani means Queen of the Night. And in this case, the title of the work came to me first and I wanted to make a work called Raat Kirani. And when I photographed the statue, I then worked through digital imaging to bring these elements together. And to have this stubborn bougainvillea that does grow everywhere in Karachi, um, kind of begin to take over the statue. And the Raat Kirani I also use as a kind of ephemeral, something that you can't put your finger on as a fragrance. So when I speak about this sort of entanglement with other geographies, one of the things I think I was trying to do is that when you, know, when you come into the gallery, you immediately have a sense of this smell but you don't quite know what's happened, but what it does do is it displaces you slightly. And you think, okay, is this really part of the work? Can everybody smell this? And it, you begin to think already differently about what you're looking at. So it, in a sense, it unfamiliarizes the familiar or it takes away a kind of static or complacency. I think for me, what was important was to make the viewer an active participant interpreting the work. I don't believe in black and white and this sort of nuanced grays within things, within meanings, how meanings are created, are really made with um, the viewer's history and the artistic intention together. And I wanted to leave space for that. And so I'm not telling a truth. I'm not relying on a narrative that I believe is true, but I'm actually telling a story for the viewer to take from whatever they can. Yeah, one of the things that I feel looking at the exhibition now that perhaps didn't work for me, and I think this happens with all exhibitions, the ideas develop in a studio. This process took a year and a half, maybe even a bit more. And so much changes in that process. You start with the universe at your feet. You know, you have, you aim for the stars, you pick up everything, everything is meaningful. And everything was so close to me. And I, of course, I didn't want to give up anything. And uh, one of the things that does happen is of necessity, you begin to edit slowly. You, you shed things, painful, it's, it's a painful process, but you do shed a lot of things in favor of the exhibition. And it's a curatorial process, this process of editing. I feel about the exhibition is that it's somehow too tight, too clean. And I would have liked to see some of the messiness that had to be discarded as part of the work, perhaps. And that's something you take with you to another work later, perhaps. While I was doing the research for this exhibition, one of the things that I came across was an article in a magazine. It was an old article, it was from 1994, but it mentioned that there was a plinth sitting outside the Karachi Municipal Corporation offices on a main road. And the writer casually seemed to mention that the plinth used to be that which the Victoria Memorial stood on. 
And I had no idea. And I was really compelled by this image of the plinth sitting outside on a main road with no one knowing why it's there, what this belongs to. You know, there's people who sit and have lunch there. There's cats who crawl over it, sleep on it. There's crows that come for crumbs. And it's a really like furniture in a city. It just sits there. And my very initial idea was that I should really put a webcam there and just bring it into the gallery and it says everything. It's sort of this kind of past being obscured, you know, or overlooked in the present. One day I was at the Mahata Palace where I'd finally found the statue and I asked the, one of the officers there, oh, you know, do you know where this plinth is? You know, I've I've asked everyone around and he laughed and he said turn around and I turned around and the plinth was sitting there. I think the reason why nobody wanted to acknowledge this was because it was in it was in bits and it was rubble really. So yeah, I did eventually find the plinth. So while I was calling people, friends or architects and um, asking them if they knew where the plinth was, they said, no, we don't know where the plinth is, but did you know that there were these bronze lions uh, which also flanked the statue? And of course I had no idea. And they said, oh, it, they're at the Karachi Zoo now. And that's really funny because of course, where do lions belong? They will have to go to the zoo. And they had moved about quite a bit in the city. And that's how I actually ended up making the film about the lions. It wasn't um, something that I had planned. And then one thing, of course, leads to another. I discovered this story of the nose of the queen, which noses often get knocked off uh, when you know, things are moved around in sculptures. Other parts do too. And, you know, so there's these uh, sort of vulnerable elements in statues. And somebody had obviously picked it up and stuck it back on. So you have this seam around the nose, which is very visible. I thought that was quite funny, but also in Urdu, losing somebody's nose, which is nak katna, is also very much to do with the loss of honor. And so I thought, you know, I would bring back that element fictionally and in some ways that impacted my covering the statue's face with Bougainville as well. I may not have obscured it to this degree and so one work, uh, the decision that I made with one work led to my decision uh, for the other work. One of the things that is happening in the exhibition is that all the works are fragmented, not just that there are six or seven elements that belong to the memorial, but also that they're fragmented through forms. For example, there is a sculpture, there's film, there's floor-based work, there is a photographic work, there's a wallpaper, and this kind of fragmentation is a very deliberate act, so it cannot fall together again. Although I've exhibited elsewhere, the Southwest Showcase gave me the opportunity to have my first solo exhibition in the UK. And in that way, I think it's, it's really significant to my practice and my career at this time in particular. And in a way, the year and a half of working on this exhibition has really grounded me through this sort of curatorial support and help with unpicking certain knots in the work um, which needed another voice beyond my own. So the title is both erotic and repulsive at once. So it ha it's this act of desire but also an act of violence. I mean tongue also of course is a synonym for language and I was thinking very much along those lines where a language is imposed on a people and what that does to the way you think, uh, the way you behave, the way you speak, the way you understand the world. <laughs> 